Ralph shop. Show a picture of Ralph. Got to see Ralph. Ralph, wave. And Rob shop is coming up soon. And Rob and Ralph are, are collaborating on both of these cars. Both of these cars go from the mechanical expertise of Ralph. Um, and when he restores them, he's done this a number of times. And it goes to Rob for the all the finish work, some, mostly the upholstery, mostly the body, fiberglass, and so forth. So when I started with Rick, we knew of one McCormick. And then we found a second. And then we found a third. And then the third one was destroyed about four or five years ago, unfortunately, in an accident. So this is one of two that we know to exist. One is in Australia now. It was found in Texas. And we found this one. Oh, this took me years to find two. This was in a junkyard in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And I got a cryptic picture one time. And the picture showed um, that it was in, oh, careful here. The picture was um, showed that it was in a junkyard covered in snow. It's a beautiful photo. And so once I think we found three years until we figure out which junkyard it was, I went up there and again had the same conversation as we did with Lance or other cars, which is we needed to um, show them what it was and what it wasn't and some of the history and so forth. And it was wonderful. Actually, I brought this car next to a few churro flying saucer as well, too, in that trip. This is the only one with a hard top. If you show pictures of outside, the other one's missing its hard top. Probably we should do a mold um, for the hard top um, in the future. We don't know. I've got pictures of probably four or five, and we never had pictures of all of them. So you kind of go up from there, and usually people kind of, my father built one, my uncle built one, that kind of stuff. There are not many built. This one came out in 55. We went right to the Motorama, and um, it uh, won awards and so forth. It was originally designed to be a mid-engine car with the engine. There's the engine, the walking Frenchie. The engine was supposed to be back here. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, mid-engine. But when they came out, he actually designed it with a front engine, the world's largest hood. I don't know if all the hoods are this big or not. But in um, this chassis, if you go outside, you can see the chassis, the custom chassis was built for it. This one, Ralph is building and yeah, making it permanent. A, a mid 80s Pontiac G body chassis. Yeah, that's fun. This one I thought was a drag car, but I'm less, less and less confident on it originally. Yeah, now they painted it green just like the 1956 Motor Life cover. I can see. Do we think this is the one from the cover? No, I know the other one. That was destroyed. Unfortunately, I found that one. That was the one that got involved in an accident out in California. Unless they're hiding it. You never know. I always thought this chassis was cool, but Ralph was saying that um, it doesn't have any evidence based on how it was built that it was a drag car. Um, someone did a very extensive job, and he, they feel that these are not, um, these are fence posts they galvanized, not, so I'm not the expert, not on the chassis, well, but I can tell you they, they spent a lot of time on it, and to me it looked like it was you know, well thought out. Remember, these guys were not 40s and 50s, they were usually in their late teens and 20s when they were building sports cars, and someone did a heck of a job. In Pennsylvania? Yeah. You found it in Pennsylvania? Yeah, New Hope. So, like your theory goes, they don't stray far from home. No, it's like fish on a reef. Cars often don't stray far from home. So it was probably raised and built in Cal in Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, somewhere right in there. It had a sticker from the Atco Dragway, and the whole car. This is this is a heck of a suspension, <laughs> heck of a chassis. But I'm not a chassis guy. It looks very well supported, but again, I'm not. You could the the um, roll bar where well, you could take it off. You can see the pedestals on the roll bar. So, I don't know if I would trust a galvanized fence post roll bar. If it is a fence post, they look pretty thick for it, fence posts. It so. like fence posts. Ralph yeah. said it was the thin wall stuff, too. Is it? So. Okay. Well, he would know. He'd probably cut into it. So, you, know, yeah. you, want, you want the chassis? You know, what happened to the chassis? If they give it away, do you want it, Mike? I was measuring it for the wildfire, but Ralph said, don't bother. Yeah. Well, I would trust his judgment. It's all of the triangulation. I know. I mean, to the untrained eye, it looks messy, but it looks really interesting. <laughs> I agree. Looks like vintage one from the 1950s. Yeah. Probably is. Save it for the collection. No, not mine. I got too much stuff I've saved. All right. And so give me the update again. We, we plan on having the Lancer and the Ford done when? Well, these guys work pretty quickly. They will both be done next year. This is November 2023. Uh, Rob is currently finishing um, stages of a Victor Cess one that you covered before, and um, that'll be done probably by the end of this year. 
Rob is also working on a Galileo, um, that he, but he hasn't started that one. I'm, that's supposed to be done by March. I can't imagine that's going to be. And then there's also uh, Grantham Stardust, which he's got too. So uh, that's actually in the shop as well, and that's owned by David DeLuca. So these guys are working their butts off. There's a removable roll bar. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you can ship that up north. We'll drive that, we'll tell, we'll tell um, Melissa that we're going to drive up north and we're going to bring this to you. Yeah, I'm sure she'd love that. It'll be your kind of car, honey. <laughs>